Hello, my YouTube friend, Pop Comics here, and in today's video, it's gonna be a big mega epic comic haul. If you like these big mega epic comic hauls, please leave a like, leave a comment, and just make the algorithm happy so that the video can do well and it inspires me to do a lot more of these videos. And if you're new to the channel, I hope to earn your subscription today. All right, let's get to all these mega hauls. I'm gonna go through this massive stack of packages full of key issues and slabbed comics. All right, let's open it up. Okay, this package comes from eBay. I paid $143.17. Let's open it up. Okay, we have a Fantastic Four number 67. I uh, I have a little bit of a story here. So I went to one of my local comic shops and they had an issue that they marked as like a good plus very good. So probably like a 4 -0. Oh, they wanted 200 bucks. So I was like, ah, I wonder if it's a good price at 200 bucks. I went online and I realized $200, like the price has gone. They must have priced it last year. The price has gone down. So I looked and, uh, oh, I just, there is a subscription crease. That's, I didn't notice that when I bought it. That takes away from it. So I might have to try to get another copy. But I got this one for $143.17. But I bought it on Macari. So I actually had $50 in credit. So it only cost me $93. I've wanted this issue for years. The price is down right now, which I'm kind of surprised. With Warlock showing up in a month or two, I feel like... We're not seeing that same kind of speculation buying that we were seeing last year. So it's it was still a great time to buy this issue. I'm happy to have it. If he does spike with the movie, that's fine. I have one. And if he goes down after the movie, maybe I'll upgrade it a little bit. But for now, I'm thrilled to have it. It's one of the last few Fantastic Four issues I needed from like issue 30 up. So awesome. Really happy with that. This package comes from Heritage Auctions. It was $1,304. This is a two DC Comics key issues, early bronze, silver age ones I've been looking for for a while. So I'm actually really excited to open this up. All right, let's open up and see what's inside. Okay, first book is Hawkman number four. Wow, I was looking for this all of last year. All the ones that I found were like low grades for $1,000. I just like, ugh. But this one I got for about $680 and they called it a fine and it looks like a fine. I don't see any major wear, just a little bit of spine ticks, but it's a beautiful looking copy. I got it for Amazing Steel. First appearance was a Tana. Thrilled to have that. I've been kind of trying to knock off the Justice League dark key issues because I like all the characters. I think they're pretty cool. Zatanna is a super cool character. So I am thrilled to get this issue. Now I want to find Hawkman number one and then work on completing the set. You know, knock out the keys and then fill in the set. Then I got a Green Lantern number 76. Technically the beginning of the Bronze Age. Such an awesome key issue. This one I got for just about $500. I'm not sure the exact total on these because the shipping amount I didn't calculate. It was $480 plus shipping basically. Uh, but this is an amazing key. I've wanted this one for a long time. I need to get the rest of the, uh, the speedy drug issues. And I just want to fill in this whole series. I would love to get all the issues that came out. Awesome, awesome key. Really happy. 76 is a decent grade, too. You know, it's not mint, but if you get like a 9.4, it's super expensive. 7.5, very affordable. Okay, I am thrilled with that. So these two comics are amazing. Happy to knock off another two amazing key issues from my want list. Okay, this is an eBay package. I paid $238.50. Let's open it up and see what's inside. All right, we have Tales of Suspense number six, a low number. I love this uh, pre-hero Marvel stuff. I would love to put these sets together. You know, Tales of Suspense, Tales to Astonish, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I think the price was pretty decent for a low number. It's in decent shape. It's a 5.5. Five, so, I, you know, it has some spine ticks and it has some wear. But overall, it's not bad at all. You know what's funny is they had ads similar to this in the 70s. So it doesn't even look like it's a book from the 1950s. That is awesome. I absolutely love that comic. All right, this is a comic book I bought on Whatnot from Sleeping Giant. It was $142. Let's open it up and see what's inside. We have Tales of the Astonish number 25. One of those pre-hero Marvel, like, sci-fi monster comics. I absolutely love collecting these. I want to collect a lot more of them. They're relatively affordable, like 100-something bucks. 140 bucks for a 5-0. Decent condition. You know, it's got some problems, but it's not bad. I was really thrilled with that. I definitely, I think this year I'll be trying to grab a lot more of this pre-hero Marvel stuff. Because I just think it's really cool. Okay, this is a key issue I bought on eBay. I paid $114.99. Let's open up and see what's inside. Okay, we have Avengers number 28, the first appearance of The Collector. Yeah, 
I had to have a copy of this. It's a 6.5, so it's a decent condition one. It's off-white to white pages. The white looks pretty good. There's not a lot of tanning. I don't see any major flaws on it. That's a, a nice-looking copy. But I love the collector. I mean, as a big collector myself, I love the idea of this cosmic entity, this being who loves to just collect the rarest stuff in the world. Yeah, okay, he enslaved some people and stuff. That's not good. But I would love to see like a Disney Plus series on The Collector. I don't need an Agatha Harkness. I want an eight-episode The Collector series where he's going throughout the universe trying to accumulate the coolest stuff. I would love to see that. So, yeah, I am thrilled with that. And it's such an affordable comic book. Just a little bit over 100 bucks for a 6.5 is amazing. Okay, this box is kind of exciting. This comes from Collector's Comics, a.k.a. David. He has his own YouTube channel. If you're not watching it, it's a fun channel. Uh, and uh, this is an issue I've been looking for for a while. And when I saw him put it up on his website, I was like, I had to get it. I did a little snafu where I couldn't figure out the website for a minute. So I looked on eBay and he actually had it for cheaper on eBay. So I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to order on eBay. So I paid $379 for this. This comic is a ghost. I've been looking for a couple of years now and I've only seen it listed like once or twice on eBay. And I usually just miss out. Like when I decide to look for it, it had just sold. So this one, I'm really happy. The price was maybe like slightly higher than the last one sold, but not by much. So I think I got for a great price. All right, let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, I am thrilled to have, this is a ghost. This is an issue I've been trying to get for a long time. Now it's not perfect. It's a 4.0, but seeing it in person has a few flaws I hadn't noticed. We have Adventures of D. Martin, Jerry Lewis, number one. I do want to finish putting this set together, but it's one of those sets where I get a few issues a year. It's not something that's easy they put together. Uh, with the 4.0, it does have, it has a chip there, but the biggest flaw I see is right there has a big chip above the um, staple, which I had not noticed. But uh, I saw a 1.5 sell like maybe a few months ago for 200 bucks. So I felt like... The price on the 4.0 is not bad. And this is just not an issue that I see that often. And I always look and I always seem to miss out. And it's really hard to find any that are in decent shape. This look like it has a flake right there. That when they encapsulated it, that corner right there. God, not... Oh, CGC. But yeah, I am thrilled with that. That issue is super awesome. I, I might have seen him do a video on this one. So I might have snagged it as soon as I, uh, I saw it. I can't remember. But I know it's just one that I've been looking for for a long time. Awesome book. All right, this is a package that comes from Heritage Auctions. I paid $2,082.72. It's, I believe, two key issues and then like a mini lot of comics. All right, let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, <laughs> this first one, I know it's silly. I bought myself another Conan number one. I kind of had to. Last year, I bought a 8.5 with off-white pages for $1,100. Now, the price had not spiked up too much during the comic boom. So, I thought it would be a good time to buy that. I was trying to buy issues that hadn't spiked yet because I was afraid in case prices dunked that I would be overpaying. So, I uh, I bought the 8.5. It was off-white pages, though. And because of that, it was slightly tanned. And that still kind of bothered me. I kind of really wanted a white logo Conan number one. So, I got 9-0 with white pages. That logo looks pretty white. I am thrilled with this one. This one looks gorgeous. Now, the question is... Okay, so, this one I paid... Uh, after all the fees and all that, I think I paid about $900 total. So, the other one, I paid $200 more. $200 more, so the price has come down a bit. I'm still thrilled with that price. And the $1,100 I paid for the other one I have, I'm still happy with that. Now, here's the thing. If I had bought this one instead of the other one, I would have paid about two or $300 more. So I would have paid about $1,300 last year for this condition compared to the $1,100 I spent. So if I sold that one for two or $300 less than this, the difference between the two is still about the same. So that's the one thing I like when you buy comic books. If the price does go down, you could sell them and buy another comic book that you might have bought instead. And you're not really actually losing money. You're just trading to something else that also had lost value. So I'm confident in comic pricing even if the prices go down it's just it's getting yourself into the game so if conan one shoots up in value i have it if the price goes down i could sell it and spend a little bit more and upgrade to an even better one uh for now though my 8.5 i'm gonna hold that as well because i still think these issues are underpriced and i love conan i was a big fan of conan movies as a kid i loved bright sonia i loved uh, Beastmaster and all the sword and sorcery movies i remember my mom would just bring me back random sword and sorcery movies that she'd rent at the rental place after she went food shopping i love this kind of stuff so 
This one I am thrilled with. I would love to get a 9.8 eventually if I could afford it. 9.8 goes through the roof. But for now, I've upgraded slightly. And because the Conan and everything is a lot wider than the other one I have, I am thrilled. That is an amazing key issue. Honestly, one, I don't mind having more than one. I might buy another one. <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not against having more than one of these because these are beautiful. Okay, this is another big key I need to fill in my Fantastic Four run. So I got Fantastic Four number 49, uh, first appearance of Galactus, first Silver Surfer cover appearance, second appearance of Silver Surfer. Uh, awesome key. I love Galactus. He's one of my all-time favorite villains. I just love the way he looks. I love this cover. An amazing cover. A 5.0 was a high enough grade that it looks pretty good to me. It has you know, a little bit of hints of wear. But it, there's no major damage. So it's a very affordable copy. This one cost me about $900. So I think the price is down to almost 50% to 75% off of what it was a year ago. I think it's a great time to buy the Silver Surfer keys. I have 48, I have 50, I have 51, I have 52. I think I had almost everything from like 30 up, but I didn't have this one. So I'm thrilled to have that. I think I have all the major Fantastic Four keys now from probably... Somewhere around the 20s up. I still have to go get the first uh, watcher. And then I have to get the big boys. The low number ones. But for now, I am thrilled to have this. I think this is a beautiful key. Perfect time to buy that. Another issue that like I really want the last year. The price went through the roof. Now that the prices are down, I am thrilled to get this one. That is so cool. Filling in the keys this year. This is the year key. I got to start selling a bunch more of my Funko Pops though. So I can keep going. Because this is a lot of fun for me. Okay, and then this was a three-pack of comics. It's a date with Judy. I paid uh, like $130 for the three. So that's probably like $45 a piece-ish. Something like that. But we do have a date with Judy number two. So we have a low number from the series. Uh, these are all mid-grade. Yeah, they said the average is very good fine. And this does definitely look like a very good. Actually, I'm going to take this one out. Because this is the most expensive one. I think this is the one that has like the big majority of the value. Uh, cover looks pretty good. You know, it has some wear. But it's not like any uh, major tears or anything. It's tanned a little bit. Uh, pages look just off-white. Yeah, that's a gorgeous comic book. I love collecting these old school like comedy romance issues. Okay, yeah. Number two, awesome. Uh, number 45, so a little bit of a cheaper issue, but still awesome older DC romance comic book. And uh, number 62. I love that cover. That cover is amazing. So I'm thrilled with those. I think I have about four or five other issues from the series. So I would love to fill in the collection and just try to get most of them. And yeah, that CC is on the cover. Other than that, it would actually be in pretty decent shape. But it has a little bit of marker on it. The number two, though, that's the big score right there, I think. Okay, those are amazing. I am really happy with all those comics. All right, this is probably the biggest growl I've ever purchased. I bought this box from Bryce Comics. Uh, you might have seen a live stream I did where I unboxed a 5.5 of this one. It was actually a mistake. His employee actually sent the wrong one. I had bought the 5.0, not the 5.5. Uh, so we contacted the other guy. The other guy still wanted the 5.5. So Brian made it really easy. He sent me a label. I sent back the 5.5. I got the 5.0 a couple days later. I'm really happy with the 5.0. It looks great. But I thought I would share it with you guys again. So I paid $4,511.41 for this package. All right, let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, so I did show you guys in the live stream that Bri added this to the package for free. I really, you know, I love his YouTube channel. It's a lot of fun. His whatnot sales are fantastic. So I felt like I could trust them with a bigger book. Now, they did make a mistake, but they fixed it. And it was really quick and easy and not a big problem. And... He does little things like this, like throw in extra freebies. I, he's done it multiple times for me now. So I, I just, he's the guy I want to buy from. If I'm going to buy a big expensive book, I want to buy from him. So that was a fun little free extra that he threw in. And then I'll show you the big boy. So, and then we have Daredevil number one. Uh, I originally went for this one because it is slightly better page quality. The 5.5 five was just off-white and this is off-white to white. So it's slightly better. Uh, in hand, it, the cover actually looks slightly more tan than the 5.5. Five. So I was originally going for the 5.0 because I thought it would be slightly more white. And I couldn't really tell in the pictures. Uh, but having it in person, I have a feeling the 5.5 five might have had some kind of treatment to it. Because it did have like a little ink stain right there. 
and it had uh and it was brighter than this this one doesn't look like it's been touched it still has some wrinkles in it i feel like this is one that you can actually get pressed maybe bump it up a little bit it looks great though like the back i see some pressable defects i see a little bit of soiling that could probably be cleaned i feel like this is a cpr candidate if i ever decide i don't know if i'm gonna do it i'm probably just i'm you know i don't want to mess it up and i am thrilled with having a daredevil number one this has been on my want list for since 1992 so was that 31 years so i am so thrilled to finally have that i have most of the daredevil run so i feel like i need to go and try to get the rest of the run now i might need about 20 more issues to complete it i know i don't have a two through five i think but i think i might have six up and then missing a couple here or there maybe a bit more than i think I just, it's just one of those things where I've been accumulating over the years as I buy collections. I haven't really gone my way to put them together, but I know I've purchased lots of runs and stuff. My friend Sean has sold me a bunch of higher grade low numbers. So I got to sort it out, figure out what I still need. And I think in the next year or so, I'm going to finish my Daredevil run, at least the original run of issues. But having number one, having the big boy is amazing. Right now, I think is a great time to buy it because I think the prices are relatively cheap compared to where they were a year ago. Uh, you know, it's still a year away from the next series that comes out. But when that series comes out, these might actually really pop. Especially if the economy gets a little bit better by next year. These might go back up to like a five to $8,000 issue. So I had to have one. And I wanted one in a nice enough condition that I really enjoy. 5.0 is perfect. For these really big grails, if you can get 5.0 kind of at the edge of what you can afford, they're worth picking it up. Because, you know, uh, 6.0, 7.0, 8.0, the price just goes through the roof. But like a 2 or 3 might be a little bit too ratty to really enjoy. So for me, the 5.0 is a perfect grade. I am so happy with that. This box is actually really fun. So this also comes from Collector Comics. I uh, This is a comic book that was in my collection. And I misplaced it or it was stolen or something. I don't know what happened to it. I've been looking for it for about 8 years. It's driving me crazy that I can't find it. Uh, the price in this... It's a 6.5 in this condition. I think the price of this issue went up to like 800 to to 1000 last year. And uh, I just, it was priced, I was like, I'm never going to own this. And then, uh, but the price has come way down. So I thought it was time to buy. And uh, I got for a great price. I paid $284.63. I, I have a little bit of story with this. I want to tell you the story. But let's open the box. Let me show you the comic book and I'll tell you the story. Okay, we have a Submariner number one and a 6.5. It is CBCS and not CGC. Uh, so I think I got for a little bit of bargain. But I still think I got for maybe $100 under market. Uh, what happened was there was an 8.0 CGC that had gone up for auction. And I really wanted to win the 8.0 for about market price. The 8.0 went for $5.65. I think it went for about $50 more than they had been selling for. But immediately, like a few minutes after that, this one was ending. So I was like, all right, you know what? If I could get this one under value, I'd still be happy. It's not the 8.0 I wanted. But I got this one for $300 cheaper than the 8.0. It's in great shape. It has a little bit of a miscut. But I'm really happy with this. It's better than the one that I'm missing. So I am thrilled with that. I think it's a super awesome comic book. Uh, the price I paid, I think I got for an amazing steal. And I'm so happy I have it back in my collection. Because the missing one, I'm missing this. And like five other comic books that has been driving me crazy for like a decade, it feels like. Uh, Silver Surfer 1 and a few other Silver Age books like this. So happy. Now I got to find my Silver Surfer number one. That'll take my anxiety away. <laughs> I hate when comics are missing. We're going to go through this massive box of comics from KRS Comics. It includes, I think, five mystery boxes and a bunch of individual comics I bought from them and whatnot. All right, let's open this box and see what's inside. Okay, I'm going to first start off with this mystery box. These were $150 each plus shipping. So the first one was $161. They have three KRS Comics exclusives and one slab in each box. So these, I love these boxes. These are some of my favorite boxes to buy. So this is the first batch. We get the exclusives out. Okay, so we have, I'm not sure the issue, but it's a Chrissy Zulu Virgin variant. Love her artwork. So this one I'm actually thrilled to get. That is, uh, what is there, three, four comics total. So you're paying probably like, $12.50 a comic plus $100 for the slab, maybe? Something like that. So $12.50 is a great price. This is easily a $34 comic. So I'm thrilled to get that. Uh, not, you know, super limited. It's probably still limited, maybe 1,500 pieces. Uh, but some of them, they'll have a certificate that actually tells you the limit. Amazing Spider-Man number 900. That's an awesome cover. Yeah, see, this one has a certificate. So this one is 
So this one's limited to 800 pieces. So it's hand numbered 466 out of 800. So that's super limited. I love Gang. They're really, really limited. And then this is one of the hits. They had the Action Comics 1051 Warren Lau foil variant. This comic's easily $150, $180 right now. Awesome. I really want that. I love Warren Lau artwork. Uh, I'm not sure how limited the foils are, but I'm assuming it's relatively limited. So that was worth more than I paid for the box. So everything else is like an added bonus. But on top of that, there was a Catwoman 49 Signature Series 9.8 graded, signed by Natalie Sanders. That's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful cover. This alone, it's got to be worth 150 bucks just for the whole price. So everything else is a bonus. And this issue is super limited out of 800 pieces. So it's a super limited issue. I'm thrilled. Mystery boxes like this are amazing. This was such a great box. This box was so amazing, not just because it gave me a lot of value. I think I almost got double my value in this box, but it's all stuff I really would want. So fantastic. You know, Natalie Sanders, Zulo, Warren Lau are all my favorite artists. I think that's Mayhew, I believe. Not 100%. Wait, who does it say the artist is on this one? Uh, Phil Nosfera. Okay. I'm not as familiar with that artist, but that is gorgeous. And I love the comics that come with the little certificate that says how limited they are. So that box is fantastic. Such a great box. So my first box I bought was a big hit box. Second box, this one was $155.50. A little bit cheaper because the shipping is cheaper after the first item. Okay, so let's go through here. So these are the three regular store variants we have we have a uh, venom number three beautiful cover who did that not sure the artist doesn't say but that one's awesome uh oh this is also added bonus they had auctioned this but no one bid on it so they decided to give these away they had three different ones and i ended up getting all three <laughs> like all right let's choose three random numbers of the boxes they put them so this one's signed by philip tan that's super awesome I got the certificate on the back so i got that for free that was a free throw in so happy with that spider gwen gwen verse number three awesomely in hook cover or in hook lee love his artwork this one's limited to 500 so super limited number that's super cool i'm thrilled to get that that's a comic i wanted and then department of truth who did this cover uh I'm not sure the artist on that one, but that cover is gorgeous. So these books alone, I think I looked on eBay and this is like a $70 issue. I think the rest are at least 20, 30 bucks. So I probably got most of my value back just on these. And so the slab will be the free bonus <laughs> or the other way around. Cause these slabs are easily like one, one fifty a piece. So, and then we had uh, star Wars, Darth Vader, number 30 virgin cover, uh, Raza artwork not 100 percent familiar with the artist but that cover is really awesome and this too is a limited print so this is number 225 out of 600 absolutely love these comics that come with a little certificate let you know how rare they are so that was a super cool pack and that wasn't like a hit pack that wasn't high value but i still feel like i got at least 50 percent more of my value and it's all stuff i would want so these are amazing if I could afford it, I'd buy every pack they make every week. <laughs> okay, and then box seven was again one fifty five fifty. So this one had uh, this is one of the first variants they did. I forget the artist on this one. Is this one a certificate? No, but that's still a cool variant. Another Philip Tan signed book that was uh, th they just added that was a free bonus. Oh, and this one yeah, it's got the certificate. It's signed, and then we have the. Mary Jane, Art Germ, Black and White. I think this one's pretty limited. Awesome cover. This is definitely one I wanted. Uh, it doesn't give me a number, but that one's awesome. And then uh, Will Jack, I think, Harley Quinn. Really cute cover. Is that one? Uh, yeah, that one's got a limited number. So that one's out of 800. I love these with the out of 800. So that's, that's limited. You know, that's pretty rare. 800 is not a lot to print of a lot of comics. So that's, I think that's easily at, at least $100 in value. Maybe a little bit more. So that covers almost, you know, two-thirds of the box. Maybe a little bit more. And then we got the slab. Now, this slab, I don't think it is as valuable as the other one so far. But it's still amazing from an artist I really enjoy. So we have an Inhukli 
Dark Web number one, nine eight. So high grade. And this too is out of 800 pieces. Again, I love these with the little certificate. That's super cool. So that, you know, this was probably one of the lower value packs and yet it's still an amazing pack. So I am thrilled with that. And that's actually one I really wanted. So that's cool. It's one I really wanted and it's an older one. So it's one you just can't find for a good price anymore. Okay, thrilled with those. And then we have box number 10. This one was 155.50 again. Okay, so these are the regular KRS. Uh, okay, so this is another throw-in one, I think. Yeah. So it's super cool that I ended up getting three. They had, I think, 10 boxes that night, maybe 15. And only three of them, they added an extra book, and I ended up getting all three. <laughs> so Ronan Book 2, Phil Tan sign. That is amazing. It's got the certificate on the back. So that was an extra throw-in. Uh, Tyler Kirkham, I'm not sure the series that is. But Sabine Rich Colored, you guys know I love Sabine Rich Colored stuff. Awesome cover, love it. Thrilled to get that. Uh, really nice Natalie Sanders book. Really do enjoy her stuff. And then another really awesome older art germ variant. Uh, I don't know how limited it is, but I think that one's also kind of hard to get. So all books I would have wanted. I think this would cost me maybe like $75 to buy all those, $80. That means I paid $70, $80 for the slab. But the slab's a super cool Amazing Spider-Man number 14, which is the, um, it's the, I think it's the first appearance of Hollow's Eve, or it says Janine Goodby becomes Hollow's Eve. So it's a Mayhew Virgin variant, beautiful cover, 9.8. That's super cool. I think, you know, if she ever becomes a character of importance down the road, it's cool to have a 9.8 of, you know, one of the more rare versions of her. I think it's her first appearance, I want to say. Maybe second appearance. I'm not just sure. I'm sure someone could tell me. But that box is awesome. Again, not the highest value box, but still a fantastic box. And I'm thrilled with it. Like, if this is as bad as the get, it's still fantastic. I still think I probably got $50 value above what I paid. Yeah, this is all stuff I would buy. If, you know, if this was on auction on whatnot for like 20 bucks and I didn't have it, I would buy it. And then the last box, number six, I paid one fifty five fifty again. Okay, we got our three regular exclusives. We have a really awesome Tyler Kirkham X-23 cover. I love that. Definitely wanted that one. Uh, Legends of the Dark Knight, number one. Awesome Warren Lau cover. I love his, or Warren Liu. I love his artwork. Uh, I think I picked that one up at New York Comic Con, though, so that one might be a duplicate. But I'm pretty sure I can get, like, 30 bucks out of it. That stuff is high demand. Warren Liu stuff is high demand. And then Deadpool 1, I think that's a Clayton Crane. Is it super limited? No, just a regular, but still probably like 3,000 pieces print. I don't think this one has a limit. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Not anything of super value in this batch, uh, but the slab is pretty awesome. So we have a beautiful Deadpool number one. It's a Spider-Man 1 homage. Uh, it's signed by Todd Nuck. So I believe he, yeah, he did the cover. 9-8. I mean, that's pretty awesome. I love getting these signed, rare, printed ones. And and this one was 505 out of 800. So also a super limited print. So that's awesome. I cannot wait to buy more mystery boxes from these guys. All right. Fantastic books. Very happy with that. Okay. This is... Uh, I think they threw in a poster. Oh, yeah, this is like a Venom Lethal Enforcer poster. Uh, all right, I'll, let me unfold this and show you guys what that looks like. Yeah, so they added this poster for free. That is so cool. That's one thing I love about KRS is not only are you getting amazing things for great deals, but they have little freebies that they throw in like this when you order a bunch. Amazing. Now, let me show you all the individual issues I bought on auction from them that night. So we have, what is this? This is Punchline, the Gotham game number four, a one in 50 foil variant. This one was 2250 shipped. Awesome, awesome foil cover. 2250 feels like such a steal on this one. Awesome comic book. Uh, Venom 32 gold signed by Mike Mayhew. Uh, this one was 2750. I feel like you get a lot of signed comics for a fantastic price from them. That's amazing. I think, yeah, yeah just signed signature on the back. Uh, the red variant, I paid eighteen fifty, so this one's even cheaper. I think the gold one was like super limited, maybe like two fifty and five hundred. Not one hundred percent sure because they don't have certificates, but 
But awesome, awesome homage covers signed by Mike Mayhew. Really happy with those. Everything is packaged well. It's like boxes within boxes. This box within the box. Very fantastic packaging. And every single one of these comics are in Mylars. So it's just like really high quality presentation here. They just, they give you a great deal. Great prices, packaged well. Everything is in Mylar, presented well. Oh man, I love buying from Chaos Comics. They're definitely one of my favorite vendors right now. I look forward to buying from them every week. Okay, so we have the Danger Girl one, the J. Scott Campbell Virgin variant. This one I know is pretty rare. Uh, I got it for $34.50, which I think is actually a really good price on this one. I gotta double check it. I just I remember this one was kind of hard to get. Oh man, this Jay Young Lee cover, gorgeous. So this is Catwoman number 45, a Jay Young Lee foil variant. This one was $34.50. Really become a big fan of Jae Hong Lee's artwork. I just think it's beautiful. Kind of hard to see on camera, but the foil is really fun on that. Oh, this one is upside down. Oh, these are a couple of these are upside down. Let me, let me flip these. All right, this is a virgin variant of Jennifer Blood number one. It's a Warren Liu artwork. He signed the cover. It's got the certificate on the back. That's awesome. I love his artwork. I think it's beautiful. And this one was $29.50. Great deal on that one. Awesome comic. All right. I believe that's Spider-Man City at War, the Jarred Perel C2E2 Virgin variant. This one was $18.50. Felt like a really good price. Beautiful cover. Uh, Daredevil number one, the Shannon Mayer variant for $12.50. That felt like a steal. I don't think that... Oh, yeah. And this one is limited. Oh, 600 pieces. So 12 bucks. What a deal. Like, I feel like... Yeah. I love buying super limited comic books for a great price. Uh, okay, so normally, uh, I'm just not a do-you-poo person. But, this one's fun. It's got two cute girls. It's a J. Scott Campbell homage. But what sold it for me was... I Okay, I bought this one for... Uh, what did I pay? $42.50. I looked on eBay and one went for $175. And this is number one out of 75. So it's the first one. I thought this one was probably like a two or three hundred dollar comic book. So I figured $42, why not? I'll stick it into my collection. I think this is my first, maybe second do you poo. I'm not going on my way to get these, but if I can find them or see someone auction them like super cheap, or you know, $42 is not super cheap, but it's 20% of full value. I'll grab it. It gives me lots of room for it to fall down. But there's only 75 of these made, and this is the number one. So I felt like that was just a great deal. Then we have the Kirill Ripon variant of G.I. Joe 298. Beautiful Baroness cover. I love this cover. This one was uh, 1950. Really happy with that. Oh, we got more upside down. Yeah, let me flip these. Another gorgeous J. Hong Lee cover. I want to collect all the covers he's done. Beautiful Spider Gwen versus Venom cover. This is uh, Venom number one, 2350. And it's also signed by J. Hong Lee. So it's got the certificate on the back. That like $23.50 feels like the regular price or even a little bit of a discount based on just the cover itself without the signature. Signature adds value. Awesome deal. And then we have Darkwing Duck number one, the Virgin variant by LaRue. Lyrix. I forget how you say her name, but I love her artwork. Uh, normally she does more of like a sexy lady cover, but Darkwing Duck by her was awesome. And this is a one in 100. So super rare version. $22.50. I felt like a steal on that one. Amazing. I love buying rare comics like that. Uh, Gwendolyn vs. Carnage, number one. Virgin variant. This one is signed by Inhyuk Lee. This one was $28.50. Man, that cover is awesome. Got a certificate on the back. Getting these signed comic books for less than 30 bucks. I feel like the retail on this alone is 30 bucks, And these you can't find cheap. KRS exclusives, they don't discount the same way other stores. Occasionally, you might get a buy two, get one free sale. So at $30 retail, $60, $90. So you pay $60 for three. That's still $20 a piece. So like for slightly more than the price on sale, but signed, that's an amazing deal. I was thrilled with that. I am thrilled with that. Okay, let me move these out. Okay, so many more amazing books. Now this... I think I was annoying people because I kept buying all the Natalie Sanders. But these were going for cheap. Like, people could have outbid me. They really wanted it. But, like, I wasn't going to let these go cheap. 
I wanted these. Uh, let's see. This was... Okay, so this is Harley Quinn number one. Beautiful Natalie Sanders cover. Uh, signed by her. And I paid $19.50. Less than 20 bucks. Has the certificate. That is super awesome. Okay, then we have... Uh, what was this? G.I. Joe Sierra Murta number one. It's a Natalie Sanders... Beautiful Baroness. She was one of my favorite characters growing up. So I love Baroness covers. Uh, again, signed right here by Natalie Sanders. If I can get that. That's amazing. Certificate on the back. Uh, this one I did pay $40.50, so I paid up on that one. But I actually had never seen it before. So to get it signed and all that, amazing. Felt like a great deal. Uh, X-Men 1, I think this was just a free giveaway. This is, I think, like a 1 in 10 variant. They just added that to every order that day, I believe. Yeah, I don't see on my invoice, so they might have added this one for free. I think this is like a 1 in 25 uh, Ian Gonzalez cover, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but the, it's a beautiful cover. This is definitely one I wanted. Super thrilled to get that. Oh, and then there's another one. I guess they gave me a couple of these. I don't remember buying these. I can't find these on my invoice. Yeah, I don't see these on the invoice, so I have a feeling they just threw in a little extra X-Men lot. That's awesome. Thank you, guys. I appreciate that. KRS is awesome like that. They do little free gibbies like that all the time. Okay, so this is Punchline number one, Warren Liu cover. Absolutely love this cover, uh, but this one's also signed by him. Certificate on the back. Getting his covers that are amazing to begin with, but also getting them signed for $32.50. That felt like an amazing deal on that. Uh, Harley Quinn number 22, another beautiful Natalie Sanders cover. This one's also signed by her. This one was $22.50. I could not believe I was buying all these Natalie Sanders signed issues for like 20 bucks, Or a little bit over, or a little bit under. Amazing. Okay, we have Harley Quinn number 75. It's the Punchline variant by Warren Liu. I got this one for $25.50. And this one's also signed by him. Signature on the back. I could not believe I $25 for his signature on a comic. That felt like such a steal. Amazing deal on that. Uh, Robin number one. This one I had already, but I love this cover. But this one is signed by Jae Hyung Lee with certificate on the back. And that one was... That one was $19.50. Less than 20 bucks. Amazing. Okay, then we have Wonder Woman number one. The Virgin variant. Another Natalie Sanders cover. Gorgeous cover. Uh, this one is signed by her. I paid $28.50. This is a thick book. Signed by her. Amazing. Okay, and then we have Immortal She-Hulk number one, the pink virgin variant. Pretty sure I got this from them in a mystery box at New York Comic Con. But I don't remember if I had one that was signed. So I decided to go for this one. It was $35.50, signed by In Hyuk Lee. I love this cover and the fact that it's signed by him. I felt like that was such a great deal. Wow, so many awesome signed books this show. Okay, so that's everything I got from them. Wow, that was amazing. We're going to go through this giant box of comic books I bought while walking around my neighborhood. As you guys might know, the last couple of weeks I've been trying to do the 10,000 step a day challenge just to get healthier. I want to build up my stamina and I actually want to get out and do a lot more like comic hunt and comic haul videos. So I figure if I'm doing five miles a day walking, if I continue to do that, it should get easier so I can start. I want to go to more conventions. I want to do more comic shops. I just want to hunt for more comic books. So the first day, you know, I was hibernating all winter. My strength is very low. So the first day that I wanted to do that challenge, I was just like, I don't want to get on my chair. <laughs> I didn't want to work. So I was like, how am I going to motivate myself? I said, you know what? Let me go to all the comic shops in the neighborhood. So we're going to look through my haul for my first day of walking. <laughs> first, we're going to go through this bag of comic books I bought from a local junk store. And then right around the corner from that junk store is Hey Kids Comics. So I also picked up a comic from them. All right, we'll go through this first. Okay, so I walked into my local junk store and they had a box of comics out front. I hadn't been there in years. I haven't been there since the pandemic started. Uh, and they never have anything priced. So it's always a little bit like, how much is it going to be today? So I grabbed this Batman. Really amazing Bronze Age Batman in decent shape. You know, good mid to high grade copy. You know, it has a couple of problems on the corners, but overall, it's really nice looking. So I was like, let me pull out one, because this one, I would assume, would be a more expensive one. So I pulled it out just to get an idea. So I asked him how much the comics are. He's like, well, it depends on what it is, what the number is, how much it's going to be. He couldn't give me a price. I was like, well, what if I buy a whole bunch? So the other guy was like, uh, if you buy 20, we'll do $3 each. Okay, so th at that point, I knew, okay, 
that's actually a pretty decent price. Especially something like this. This has got to be like a $20 issue for 3 bucks. Yeah. I knew I had to buy some comics. Uh, but I wanted to get even cheaper. So I was like, well, how many would I have to buy to get 2 bucks? And he's like, 100 100 is almost the whole box. I was like, all right, I can't do 100 because I didn't think there was enough in the box for me to buy to hit 100 But I was pretty confident that I would be able to find 20 at 3 bucks. Maybe a couple would be pushing it. Uh, but... I was like, all right, let's dig in. So first, I grabbed Batman 262. Again, just pretty decent shape for three bucks. That was a steal. Like, I'd buy stuff like that all to Because I know I could, if I have already, I could sell it and make a good profit on it. And if I don't have it, that's amazing to add to the collection. Uh, next, I grabbed Thundercats 21. This one might have been one that, like, I'm pretty sure I have already. So I just grabbed this one to fill in the 20. But I think this is a $10 to $15 issue. So $3 was a good price on that. Uh, we got... Werewolf by Night number 41. Again, pretty. all these were in pretty decent shape. At least like sixes to eights, I think. Uh, Werewolf by Night number 39. Now, seeing a whole bunch in the 30s here, I was like, oh, they probably sold 32 for like three bucks. <laughs> but I'm still thrilled to get these in pretty decent shape. Number 42. Actually, I'm going to take one out just so you guys can look at it a little bit better. All right. So if you look at it, it's glossy. Uh, there's like a couple of ticks right by the barcode right there but overall this is easy good like 780 condition because that's the only real flaw i see is just a couple and that's a pressable defect if i got into pressing that would be fixable so as i'm taking through i mean that's this is awesome stuff i love buying bronze age horror and three dollars right now like it used to be three dollars was more than i wanted to pay i was aiming for like one to two bucks for years but now this stuff had just become very popular and it's hard to find cheap and cheap in decent shape. So number 40. Those are amazing. A uh, couple of the Charlton ones. These might be a little bit closer to $3 in value. Like these weren't as much of a steal as the Werewolf by Night. But you don't see them. Uh, they were in pretty decent shape. They do have some browning. But that's very typical of Charlton. Really happy with that though. Uh, Scary Tales number 7. So we got a few of those from the series. Uh, Scary Tales, number four. I might have had one or two of these, but again, I was trying to hit the 20 because they said I had to buy 20 to get three bucks. So the goal is to find 20 amazing comics. Uh, Scary Tales, number five. And Scary Tales, number eight. That's a pretty awesome epic cover. Uh, Scary Tales, number nine. So I was actually really happy with all these because I do really like Charlton horror stuff. Uh, and then we have some cool, uh, I guess, late 80s manga. I'm not sure the year. Uh, no, 91, early 90s. But it's full color manga and it's beautifully illustrated. I thought those was amazing. I looked on eBay and these probably go for about $10, $15 a piece. So I'm actually really happy I picked these up. So we have head number three, head number two. Again, beautiful full color artwork inside. Just it's fun finding color manga just because it doesn't get colored that often. So when I can find it, it's just it's such a treat to me. And then we have some more Bronze Age Batman. We have Batman 302. Again, pretty decent, like 6 to 8 oh condition. Number 301. I mean, I'd buy this stuff all day long at 3 bucks. And then I think this one was one that I just kind of grabbed because I didn't know what else I want to grab. $3 is probably still a good price on it, but I'm pretty sure I had that. Action 500. And then uh, All New War, like... I want the, I just didn't want to pay $3 for it, but I think $3 is actually a good price on that. Pretty cool epic cover and Scary Tales number three. So for 60 bucks, I think that's a pretty good deal. I think I got some amazing comic books. Lots of those are probably low end, $5, high end, $20. So I think I got a really good price on those. And then as I was walking out, I also, they had a bin of just like random toys and stuff. And they had a Veronica doll. You guys know I, I love my uh, Archie stuff. Boxes torn up it's not mint or anything but i asked him how much it is he said five bucks i figured for five dollars i'll just take her out of the box i'll have a veronica doll out of the box for five bucks heck yeah okay so that was it for the thrift store next i went around the corner to uh hey kids comics uh everything there was kind of overpriced for the vintage stuff like it looked like higher than ebay prices i tried to negotiate a little bit on a few things but they weren't budging on the price so I uh, I did end up buying Casper's Ghostland number eight because this cover is amazing. I love Halloween themed covers. We have a pumpkin moon, you know, Casper, uh, Spooky, I believe, the Nightmare Horse Wendy. 
that's a cool cover uh it's got the black background it's probably mid grade like a four five five oh because it does have some spine creasing and whatnot but for 15 bucks i was like why not it's not a comic you see every day and it's it, relatively decent shape for the age so i thought that was really cool next i walked over to comic station and they had a four for a hundred dollar slab sale so i bought four slab comics for a hundred bucks got some really cool stuff so let's go through this bag all the cheap slabs were on sale at 35 last time i was there but this time they were on sale four for 400 bucks so i was like all right let me find four they originally had this one at 15 so 25 dollars for cutie bunny summer fun number one let me take out the bag so it's a little bit less clear i do like these kind of cutesy anthropomorphic animal books i think they're just fun but i think they're enjoyable so I got that. 25 bucks, 9 0 feels like a really good deal on that. And then we had a uh, Virgin Peach Momoko, originally 75 so 25 for that for a 9 8 You guys know I love my Peach Momoko stuff. So yeah, 25 bucks for a 9 8 Virgin variant Peach Momoko comic book. That felt like a really, really good price. I'll grab $25 Peach Momoko slabs all day long. And then I feel like I might have grabbed one of these the last time i was there like a month or two ago but uh i needed something to make four for ten so i decided to grab uh oh original price on this was they had it at 79 so 25 feels like a really good price gi joe snake eyes number one a fun red foil cover i thought that was really neat for 25 bucks feels like a, just a really 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 good price on that and then the final one to fill in the set we got daredevil number 10 a uh uh jung jung yoon yoon i always forget how to say their name but i thought it was a really fun cover a fun daredevil electric cover 25 bucks for a 90 yeah why not so i thought that was an amazing deal four four hundred bucks i was really happy with those then i went to action city comics i didn't see anything new that i wanted that day i'm just i'm trying not to buy as much new stuff i'm looking for more vintage at the moment but then i walked back to my shop just to check in with my wife and i realized i still had to make another like two or three thousand steps for my day so i walked over to desert island another comic shop in the neighborhood but it's kind of like in the opposite direction so let me show you the stack of stuff i bought from desert island next we have what i bought at desert island i like rating their dollar bin because they have a lot of like weird indie stuff and so for a buck why not try it out we got slab number two a weird horror comic that was a little bit odd that one I didn't like as much, but this one I thought had a really cool cover. So slab number one, uh, Army of Darkness, Ashes to Ashes number four. That's really cool. I like grabbing any uh, classic horror issues whenever I can, especially at for a dollar. So that is super cool. Uh, Royals number two. I just really like the artwork on the cover. Uh, Slam number four, really fun cover slam number two i might have picked these up from them the last time i was there <laughs> it's been a while the tattered man uh i don't know the number but it's a jimmy palmiotti book for buck yeah i'll grab that i really like the cover on that uh rise number three a fun zombie cover uh, supreme squadron number five i like the artwork on that one uh sojourn 22 i just it's a uh was a great land cover but i think it's funny because it's the sports illustrated cover redrawn <laughs> from the 90s uh squadron of supreme number 15 like the cover art on that too i kind of like modern day like digital but looks sort of like animated covers i'm kind of a fan of those uh spring number two that looked like a fun cover uh spring number one now this one wasn't as good but sometimes when i find one i like i end up just buying all of them just in case i like the series because at a dollar it's not like it's uh breaking the bank or anything uh black af devil's die number three uh spring number three that cover looked beautiful clandestino number three i'll grab black mask stuff for a dollar uh jimmy Chonga number two eric pell comic i thought that was pretty cool for a buck uh the forever is number four fracture number two that looked like a fun indie book the forever is number two uh clandestino number six uh oh i'll grab the second one of these by mistake i didn't mean to grab two of those uh beautiful canvas number one another black mask book 
uh, Coyotes number two. I thought that was a really cool cover. I really like the way it looked. And Slab number three. So those are a lot of fun dollar books. Then I grabbed some of their oddball indie stuff, which they always have a lot of like underground comics from the 70s, which is fun. That's one reason why I like Desert Island because it's something a little bit different than the other shops in the neighborhood. Uh, so we got Smiling Ed Smiley number two. It had a little chip out. Uh, the interior artwork I didn't like as much, but I thought the cover was really cool looking for three bucks. Figure why not? Uh, Centrifugal Bumble Puppy. I thought the cover was really cool looking. I really just like the way this monster guy looks. So I decided to pay 10 bucks for that. Why not? And then uh, Zero Number Two. I paid eight for this. 75 cent cover, which means it's probably from the mid 70s. So I love buying Bronze Age independent comics. They're just hard to find in general. So for $8, why not? Thought that looked kind of fun. Then I grabbed two books, which are you know, full price cover price. I didn't get any deals on them, but I like supporting the local shops when I can. So I bought um, Princess Knight from Osamu Tezuka. Absolutely love his artwork. He's the godfather of anime. His 60s and 70s mangas are beautiful. Absolutely love the illustration. I love the storytelling too. So these are actually the comics I do read. I read all the Osamu Tezuka stuff. Like I actually enjoy reading these. So I for reading, like a lot of this other stuff I collect for the art. His stuff I collect for the art, but also to read it. So that's my next book to read. And I also grabbed the uh, Heiao Miyazaki Shuna's Journey, which is, uh, I love Heiao Miyazaki Studio Ghibli. is probably my favorite set of movies, like all the awesome anime that they've done. And uh, this is, was an unpublished book, or an untranslated book, I guess, I mean, that they just translated in English recently. And it says it's volume one, so I'm wondering if there's a bunch of volumes of these coming out. But inside, it's got all these beautiful painted Heia Miyazaki works. Which, let me see if I can get the focus on here. Like, this stuff is just beautiful to me. Ah, oh, man. It's hard to get the phone to focus on the thing I'm trying to show. <laughs> there we go. Look at this gorgeous painted artwork. So, yeah, I had to have this. I mean, I paid cover price. Although, I think he ended up charging me just 100 total for everything. Which, uh, so he probably took like 10 or $20 off of as price. So I'm actually was happy with that. Really, really fun stuff. I had a fun time just digging through the comics there. We're going to open up this giant box from Prize Comics filled with eight slabbed comics. All stuff I bought and whatnot. Now, Bry's What Not Show is super fun to me because he gives away really amazing prizes. He'll do like 10 to even 20 slab giveaways each show, which is all amazing. Sometimes it's his own exclusive. Sometimes it's some other stuff. But here you have a chance of getting like a $50, $100 prize 10, 20 times over. So I enjoy his shows just for a chance to try to win it. He does this thing where if you win two giveaways, you go on to this prize wheel where it spins. I think there's like nine spots for a $150 gift card or a $500 cash. And then also he does another prize wheel at the end of the show where each time you buy an item in the show, he puts you on the prize wheel. Same prize wheel. And this show, I magically won. I actually bought an extra three or four slabs that were cheap. Just, I figure I'll buy them just to have a few more entries. And I won at the end. And then I, not only did I win a chance to spin the wheel, but I won the $500 cash. That was pretty amazing. And then the other thing I really like about uh, Bry's comics on whatnot is he's really good at listing his stuff in the app before the show starts. So you can actually see what he's going to be auctioning off that night. So you can go in, you can research what you want, try to figure the price. So actually this night what I did was I picked out the things I wanted the most. I looked up on eBay what they sold for. I looked at Go Collectors to see if I missed any other spots they sold. And I kind of made the price point I wanted to pay. So I think in a couple cases, I paid the full value. A couple other cases, I got a really good price. All right, let's start digging through this box. The comics are packed very well. Each one was in its own uh, bubble envelope. There was extra padding that we pulled out just when I got the package. It was also in one of the CGC boxes that had the piece of cardboard over the top. So very great packaging, very happy with that. First book I bought was Silk Number no. 1, beautiful Jen Bartel cover. Uh, let's see, I think it's a Frankie's exclusive. Yeah, it's a Frankie's exclusive. Love that cover, it's gorgeous. That one I paid $57. It was $48 winning bid, $57 was shipping. So shipping was 
nine dollars but that was the first item the first item is always going to have the higher shipping and then there's a reduced shipping each additional item but yeah that's a gorgeous comic i do try to collect as much jen bartell as i can get for a good price i think that one i was willing to pay up to 75 dollars for okay the next comic i bought was uh let's see Something is Killing the Children, number 26. It's the Teeny Onion Foil Edition. I thought it was a really cool looking cover. I just love the way the shininess looks on it. It's a 9.8. My winning bid was $120 plus $4.50, so $124.50. I looked on eBay, and I believe one sold for like $187. So I think I got this one for about $50 bucks under market. Amazing. Uh, I think it's a store exclusive. Not 100 percent sure. All I know is it's a rare edition. I thought it was an awesome looking cover. So I decided to bid on that guy. Okay, I thought this cover was amazing. So we have Monsters Unleashed number four. It's a Jae Hung Lee variant. I love Jae Hung Lee. I try to collect as many covers as he does as well. It's also a fun Devil Dinosaur Moon Girl cover. I'm a big fan of both characters. Uh, I paid. $182 plus $450 shipping, so $186.50. This one was expensive. Uh, I think on eBay it would have cost me just slightly more, maybe about $200. Bucks. So I almost paid full value on that, but that's one I really wanted because I do love the artist, and I thought it was a really cool cover, and I think that's a pretty rare cover to get. So I was really happy to get that one. Right, let's scooch that one over here. All right, yeah, this is one I really wanted it, but it had shot up in value when it came out. Or with the news with her in the Black Panther movie, I think this one really went up high. We have Invincible Iron Man number one, the Deagle variant with Ray Ray Williams on the cover. Really beautiful cover. Yeah, this one cost me two thirty seven plus four fifty shipping, so two forty one fifty. I think ah, that's close to the full value. I got it a little bit under market value, I think. But I know at its peak, this issue had hit like four or $500. So I was happy to pick that one up. Thought it was a good price. Okay, and then so those were all the main ones I wanted that he had for sale that night. But then he had a whole bunch of Saga issues, which I love Saga. He originally had the whole Saga set on his website for sale for, oh, something like 2200 something like that. I was really tempted to buy the whole thing. But I decided, you know, I can't really afford it. But then I saw that he was listing them all for auction. So I decided to grab whatever I could get for cheap just to have more entries into the end wheel. My goal was if I could get them for about 40 bucks, I'd get an entry to win something and I'd also get a comic book I wanted for a good price. Okay, we have Saga number 11. This was a, uh, let's see, 9-8. It's a high-grade copy of that. Love Saga, so it was really cool to get a high-grade Saga comic book. That one was $25, bucks, so $29.50 is shipping. So less than $30. Bucks. That's actually pretty awesome. For that cheap, I figure it was definitely worth grabbing a couple of these. Okay, we have Saga number 22. I mean, another 9.8. That's awesome. This one I won for $32. So $36.50 was shipping. Still a decent price. Not as cheap as that, but still a really good price. This is the first appearance of King Robot, so a little bit more of a key issue in the series. But yeah, really happy to get that one. Okay, next was Saga 23. I kind of wish I bought more of them. I would have loved to have the whole set in 9 8. But this one I won for 14 bucks, so 18.50 was shipping. That was a steal of a price. Definitely like under 20 bucks for a 9 8 Saga. I'd buy that all day long. That one is amazing. And then finally, I got Saga number 24. That one was uh, that one was $32 winning bid, so $36.50. So a little bit more expensive than the others, but overall, I'm thrilled to get a handful of Sagas at 9.8s for super cheap. Really, really cool books. So here we go. Uh, the Wheel of Names... Alrighty, are we good to spin? Yep, good to spin. Good luck, everyone. Thank you for a fun show tonight. Oh, pop hey, fun to play! Pop fun to play! Congrats, congrats, congrats! All right, let's get that second wheel. All right, so here's the second wheel. 
There's five hundred dollars cash. Where's the five hundred cash? Uh, right there. Five hundred dollars cash, and then there's nine spots for a hundred and fifty dollars store credit. Let's spin it. Good luck, pop. Oh no way! No hey. way! Let's go! I can help up these two packages of comics I bought from Abbott's Comics on Whatnot. Now, one of the things I'd like to do on Whatnot when I'm not... Like, sometimes I'll go in a room and I'll just buy a ton of stuff. I'm ready to buy stuff. Sometimes when I'm like, all right, I'm trying not to spend money this week. But I still want to have the fun of hunting comics. I will just start flipping through the app and I'm looking for rooms that are doing giveaways. So I might go like scroll, 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 find a giveaway, enter it. If uh, like Comic Traders is on at night, they just do a whole bunch of giveaways. So you can just stay in that room all night. And uh, so I was scrolling through one night. Uh, I think it was pretty late actually. And I popped into Abbott's Comics and uh, I think he normally does like mystery pulls for like three for $10 or something like that. And uh, it's not something I normally would do, but... I think he only had like five or six people in the room at the time. So it was a very slow night for him. So he was just going through a box of stuff he had just bought. And uh, so I was just watching him like, oh, what do you get? You know, I'm curious. I love digging a box. And I was just like watching someone dig a box. So, you know, that alone was kind of entertaining for me. So then he starts pulling out stuff. And then he pulls out some uh, Mobius books. I absolutely love Mobius. He's one of my all-time favorite artists. So he's like, pull, he pulls out like five or six. I'm like, oh, so I write, oh, I'm interested in those. How much do you want for them? So he goes through, he has, I think, like five or six Mobius graphic novels. And then he had uh, like three or four comics. He's like, 20 bucks. I was like, yeah, I'll take that for $20. $20 was an amazing deal. So uh, he put up the listing and he goes, no one else buys them. So <laughs> he let me buy the stack for 20 bucks. Amazing deal. Really happy with that deal. I the, It was packaged well. It should, even the box looked damaged. Like it was crushed by the post office. But everything inside arrived in good shape. And then, so I left him good feedback. I was really thrilled with the price. I was thrilled with how nice he was. I was thrilled with how fast he shipped and how well he shipped. Uh, so I left him nice feedback. So the next time I saw him pop up, like a week or two later, so I popped into his room and he's like, oh, hey, Pop, thank you so much for the nice feedback. He's like, you know, what? I found more. So he found another stack of Mobius books and maybe a couple other non-Mobius, but like cool e sci-fi graphic novels. So he's like, I want $20 for this stack too. So I was like, heck yeah. So I bought that and I think I grabbed a couple of his mystery pools just as a thank you because he was giving me such a great deal on those. The mystery pools aren't something I normally would buy. I'm not really, I only like to buy mystery boxes if it's kind of what I know, something I want, or if it's from some, a vendor that has their own books in their mystery box. So I'm going to have two boxes full of the graphic novels, the Mobius stuff, and a couple of mystery pools. So this is going to be tons of fun. So let's open up these two boxes and see what's inside. Okay, the first package... Oh man, I am thrilled to have these because I only have two or three of them. So getting like all of them at once, this is super amazing. So we have Mobius number six. Uh, and I think there's nine books here. And I think I paid like 30. So what was that like $3 a book? Amazing price on these. I'm going to open this up. Yeah, so we got... So these are just like a collection of all his work. And there's like page after page of... The most gorgeous drawn Mobius pages. Like, this stuff is just so beautiful to me. I absolutely love Mobius. So that, like, at the price I got these for, I am thrilled. This is, like, such a dream come true kind of purchase. Because I've always wanted this whole set. And I just, like, it's one of those things where I just try to pick them up at garage sales and stuff. And I don't see them often enough. So you have Mobius number seven, the goddess. So these are all short stories. I think they're reprinted from some of them might have been like heavy metal, some other places. Uh, Mobius number five. I don't think I can. Let me move this back a little bit. There we go. We got all three on camera. So we got Mobius number five, the gardens of Adina again. These are just all filled with beautiful Mobius illustrations. Beautiful illustrated graphic novels. Mobius number five. Yeah, like, I just love the style of his drawing. It just is gorgeous. It's just colored in a nice way. It just has its own unique style to it. Yeah, that's beautiful. Let me put that over there. Uh, and then these, I think I did have the elsewhere prints, but still full Mobius comic books. We have uh, number one. And actually, you know what? I might not have number five. I might actually have needed that one. Okay, that's super cool. Okay, this one is not the collected works. I think this is its own graphic novel, which I want to look at because I don't know if I'm familiar with this one. So the Magic Crystal, that cover is amazing. 
Uh, back cover looks cool. Yeah, this is different. This is more of a matte finish and not as glossy as the other ones. But again, it's gorgeous. It is a little bit uh, oxidized inside. But you know what? Two or three dollars a book. I don't care. I just want them so I can read them and enjoy them. I'm not buying these as like investments or high value collectibles. Although I think they are kind of pricey to find. I'm just, I'll buy stuff like this in a heartbeat just because I love it. Moby C. This one I've actually never seen either. I usually, see, I think I usually see under seven. So this one must be a little bit harder to find. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, this one's a bit more glossy inside like the other ones. Art style. Uh, I think it had a different colorist maybe. It feels slightly different. Uh, and maybe Moby's just worked on it with someone else. Not 100% sure on that one. Because it feels slightly different than the other ones. But that's still amazing. I will collect every Mobius thing I can get. I would love to have a complete collection of all his work. That's a life goal. I don't know how close I am to doing that. But I've been buying Mobius stuff for 25 years. So every time I see it, I buy it. Okay, and then the Art of Mobius. This one I think is pretty rare too. I'm going to open that one up. Oh, this one also feels a bit thicker. The Art of Mobius. And oh, we got black and white. Okay, so this just has clips and pages and, you know, it's not complete stories. It's just kind of highlighting his career of work. Uh, these are gorgeous, though. Love this stuff. Wow. Oh, that page is beautiful. It's, I guess it's Little Nemo. I love Little Nemo. I'm also a big fan of um, Windsor McKay. So I have a whole bunch of reprints of that. Okay, that is super cool. Yeah, thrilled to get that. Thrilled. And then this one, I uh, probably can't show that one. <laughs> I'll probably get demonetized. But that one I haven't seen before in person either. So that's thrilling. Uh, there might have been one or two I had, but wow, I can't believe I got all these at once. This is amazing to me. Okay, let's open up the other box. Okay, first these are the mystery pools. I believe it, I did three for 10 bucks. I think he also does a uh, like a duck race at the end of the show. So we got Daredevil number 77, uh, House of M, Spider-Man number 4 or 5, and uh, Electra the Hand. That actually has a really beautiful cover. So I'm not, you know, this stuff, maybe $3 a piece feels a little bit high. But again, I was basically, I just want to say thank you for the Mobius stuff. That's why I bought a little extra. And then, uh, oh, I guess he, oh, he threw this in and it looks like he signed it. Oh, maybe this was... Uh, is this his own book? I gotta look at this. It's a really fun cover. Uh, yeah, Abbott's Comics. So this is one of his... Uh, he looks like he's with a bunch of comic shops that put this comic together. So this must be his comic. He signed it. He wrote uh, Pop Fun on it, which is awesome. Oh, that's super cool. So that must be just like a free uh, add-in that he added to the purchase. Oh, that's neat. I love getting stuff like that. Okay, that's super cool. All right, let me get the Mobius stuff now. Okay, I'm looking at the invoice, and uh, he might charge me only $8, but I think I paid cheaper for this stack. I thought I paid 20 this time, but no, I paid, yeah, he only charged me 8 bucks for this stack. That's why I bought the other one, because I felt like I underpaid for that. <laughs> I have a bad habit of bidding against myself sometimes and whatnot, or at least buying something else just as a thank you if the price is, like, really good. Uh, okay, so we have a science fiction age magazine. And I don't remember. He might have added some of the stuff. I don't remember if I saw those or not. Because it's mostly just buying. There was, I remember like two or three Mobius and a couple other graphic novels. There we go. We got Mobius one. Oh, and this one is damaged, but I did see that. But yeah, that was you know super cheap. Uh, number two, which is amazing. Oh, this one's backwards. Number four. That's super cool. Yeah, so like, I think even one of these is worth more than that. And then this is the Airtight Garage, number three. And uh, Science Fiction Age, November 1992. So, yeah, I think he only charged me $8 for that. It's probably because some of them were damaged. But you know what? I'm not, again, as I said, I'm not buying these as like a collectible or investment. I'm buying them because I absolutely love Mobius artwork. And I love trying to find his work for cheap. Because it's really hard to find for a good price. So yeah, that was an amazing, amazing lot of stuff. Really happy with it. Woo, that was a ton of fun. I'm going to put another mega epic comic call right there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.